All right, hello everybody. We are doing our next lesson in um, uh, Unit 2B. It's on the derivatives of exponentials and logarithms. So uh, it's quite a bit of notes here, but most of it is kind of, a lot of it is reviewing uh, properties of exponentials and logarithms and then also practicing some derivatives with each of those. Um, so it's kind of a longer lesson. I'm going to try to get through as much as I can in the video without going over 30 minutes. And we will uh, we'll pick up where we left off in class. Okay, so here's a warm up, just practicing finding the um, the f inverse prime of one. So remember, there's a formula for that. Look through your notes to see if you can compute this. We will uh, we'll do this together in class um, tomorrow. And um, <clears throat> also, the next slide that I have on here is uh, is another warm up, something that I was wanting you to just try to see if you can do on your own. But um, it's kind of refreshing yourself on log properties, okay, to help us with, because I broke this lesson down into two parts, logs and, and exponents. But I'm starting off with logs first. But, um, again, we can do this in class together, but it's, it's finding exact value uh, with logs. It is using log properties to both expand and write as a single quantity. So see if you can do that. Remember, there's 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 properties that help us separate these. So for instance, in B, you could say the ln of x squared minus the ln of y cubed z to the fourth, and then you can split it further. You can say 2 ln x uh, minus, and then you could say in parentheses maybe uh, you can split it as ln y cubed and then plus ln of z to the fourth, and then uh, see so they can be split apart with the product and quotient rules, and we can we can discuss those further in class. But this is just a little review to kind of help us uh, with a couple problems later on. Okay, <clears throat> and like I said, um, a lot of these notes are going to be kind of uh, at least these first few notes are review of what logs are. Okay, so let's just kind of read through some of these, and I don't, I'm not going to write much on some of these, but it says if a is greater than zero, um, and a does not equal one, the exponential function a to the x is one to one, and has an inverse function f inverse denoted by log. So we're going to talk about log first, and then we'll jump into um, exponentials. Okay. So log base a of x equals y can be rewritten as a to the y equals x. Remember, it's always the base of the log is the base of the exponent. The power over on the, or the value over on the right is always the power of the exponent, and it equals the quantity inside of your log. Okay. Um, and here's just another couple log properties to kind of refresh yourselves a little bit. Log base a of a to the x is just x. This is because of the fact that this is inverse of each other, right? You have an exponent and a log, it undoes each other, and you're left with x, okay? And same for if you had the log plugged into the exponential equations, it does map back to x, okay? All right, um, these are the properties of the logs that you were supposed to use for the warm-ups, so see if you can remember those. That's your product, quotient, and power rule. And some other cool properties is the, uh, the log of one is just zero. Okay, because if you were to graph log on your calculator um, at 1, it's always equal to 0. And uh, log base A of A is just equal to 1. Um, and that goes with the fact that A to the first power is obviously equal to A, if you were to change it to an exponential. Okay. Um, here's some other log properties to kind of keep in mind. Um, if A is greater than 1 in your base, then the limit as we go to infinity for log is infinity, and the limit as we go to zero from the right is negative infinity. All that is just reminding you is in behavior for a log. So if you remember, there is a vertical asymptote um, at zero for log, and there's nothing to the left of that. That's why it's specifying zero from the right. So as I'm coming in from the right, it's going to negative infinity, and as I go off to the right, it goes to positive infinity. And it specified again that the y-axis is a vertical asymptote for this curve. All right. Um, just some other things here. The uh, This is a very important one. The logarithm with base e is called the natural log. Okay. 
So, I mean, here it is, base E. We rewrite that as ln of x. Hopefully you've seen that before. And since ln means that we have a base of E, then it can be rewritten as an exponential as E to the Y equaling X. Right? And because E to the X, so E to the X and ln of X, again, are um, inverses of each other. Okay. So the same cancellation uh, equations apply. Like if I take the ln of e to the x, I'm just left with x. Or if I do e to the ln of x, I'm just left with x. Because they're, or they're uh, inverses of each other, so they undo each other. Okay. Um, <clears throat> just some, uh, you might have not known this one, but this is going to help us uh, later on with the derivative. But uh, if I have the log base a uh, of x, it's equal to ln of x divided by ln of a. So for example, if I had the log, the log of uh, base 5 of x, this is the same thing as ln of x over ln of 5. Or another way of writing that is 1 over ln of 5 times ln of x. So, uh, and that, again, that's going to come in handy later for a derivative. All right, some, uh, some other properties with logs here. Um, well, actually, we've already, well, we've already covered this because ln, ln's graph looks very similar to a regular log. I mean, it still looks like the same graph. It's not changed too much. The limit to infinity is still infinity. And the limit to um, zero from the right is still negative infinity. So again, those are just some properties. Some things to keep in mind with logs. Just try to refresh yourself on that. Look back over that if you need to. But, but yeah, that's some log properties. All right, let's actually talk about the derivative of ln of x. Now I left this whole space here uh, to, to show what the derivative of ln is algebraically, um, but that involves us knowing what the derivative of an exponential is, which we don't yet. So I'm going to leave that space, that space blank for now, and we're just going to cut down to what it is. So uh, there's four derivatives that we're learning today. This is the first of them. Mm -hmm. So I want you to memorize this right here. Okay. That the derivative of ln of x is equal to 1 over x. And the same thing is being said down here. I can extend it a little bit. Um, that the derivative of ln of u is equal to 1 over u times du over dx. In other words, what this second box is saying is if I have anything other than x in the quantity, it's just going to be chain rule. This is another way of saying chain rule. And I got some examples of that um, on the next slide. But to give you a quick example, what if I have the ln of, I don't know, 5x plus 2? Well, then what this box is saying right here is take the derivative as if you would, 1 over x or 1 over the quantity. So that's going to be 1 over 5x plus 2. But then this means to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of what they call u or the quantity would be uh, just derivative of 5x plus 2, which is 5. Okay. So let's look at some examples of that real quick. And I might do all of these, some of these, I don't know. All right, ln of 1 over, uh, the ln of x squared times sine of x. So it's like we had a function within a function, so it's chain rule with ln. So the first thing is the derivative of ln is 1 over x, or 1 over x squared sine of x. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of the inside is the derivative of x squared sine of x, which is going to be times. All right, taking the derivative of this is, is product rule. So uh, we're going to take the derivative of x squared, so 2x, leave the second one the same, plus leave the first the same, and the derivative of sine is cosine. That's my answer. And honestly, guys, I mean, I, you can simplify that, I'm sure, a few more steps. Like, you can make it one fraction. Maybe it looks like we can take out a GCF of X, maybe. But just leave it that way for now. Okay. All right, what about the next one? So this is ln. So I'm going to do 1 over the cosine of X. Because, again, the derivative of ln of X one over x. So anything other than x, we're going to put in the denominator. And then by chain rule, we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. And the derivative of cosine 
is negative sine of x. And again, I'm completely okay with you leaving it that way. I mean, it does simplify. I mean, that's negative sine over cosine, which is just negative tan of x. So you could write that if you want, but again, if I'm asking you to just find the derivative, it does not have to be simplified. And then lastly, we got to uh, find the derivative of ln of 1 plus x squared over 1 minus x, uh, x squared. So I actually got two ways I want to talk about how to do this real quick. Um, so I'll draw a little line. The first way is to do what I've been saying. So it's going to be 1 over the quantity on the inside. So 1 over 1 plus x squared over 1 minus x squared. And then we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. Now, the derivative of the inside is going to be quotient rule. So it's going to be low d high, which would just be 2x, or d high minus high, which is 1 plus x squared, d low, or negative 2x, all over low low, uh, which would be 1 minus x squared, quantity squared. Now, honestly, guys, I mean, that... That's the answer. I mean, we did 1 over the quantity and then times the derivative of the quantity. So we did the derivative of ln with chain rule. And I'm fine with that. I'm fine with you leaving it that way. I mean, it looks good to me. But there is a way that sometimes simplifies this for us, and that's using log properties. So from the very beginning, we could have separated this as the ln of 1 plus x squared minus the ln of 1 minus x squared. And the reason we're able to do that is because with division in the natural law, we can do the quotient property and separate them into two separate logs. So that's kind of what we did for one up here that I wanted you to try. But either way, it makes it a little bit easier because we can take the derivatives of each of these. Like for the first one, it would be 1 over 1 plus x squared and then times the derivative of the inside, which is 2x. And then minus uh, 1 over... 1 minus x squared, and then times the derivative of the inside, which is that. So in this particular example, I mean, I liked separating it because it made the derivative look a little less scary. They're, they're, both of those are equivalent, but um, I don't have to, I mean, I don't have to have an ugly answer. I mean, it's, it's kind of your choice, okay? But again, this might be a multiple choice question, so make sure you try to, you know, match it. All right, so uh, right now we know that the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x. The next derivative of the four I'm talking about today is the derivative of just regular log. So not natural log, but like a log with any other base. And it's going back to the fact that log base a of x is equal to this right here. Okay, we talked about that in an earlier slide. And if I decide to, and, and this is nothing more than saying 1 over ln of a times the ln of x. And 1 over ln of a is just a constant. So really this derivative of this, so f prime of x, is equal to 1 over ln of a, because that's a constant. And then times the derivative of ln of x is 1 over x, or simply 1 over x ln of a. So I want you to add that to your arsenal here, okay? So this next box is the next. This next box here is the next important derivative. So we know now that the derivative of log base anything of x is equal to 1 over x times ln of a. And again, if this is anything other than x, um, it, we would just multiply by the derivative of that. So like if this was log base a of u, meaning some quantity, we could say this is 1 over u ln of a times the derivative of u. Okay. Let's look at a couple examples. So we got the, uh, <clears throat> the derivative of log base 2 of cosine of a. So I'll break this into a couple parts. All right. I always will say, and, and, okay, so it's 1 over, and I always put the ln of a first, so that's going to be 1 over ln base 2, okay, ln base 2, uh, times the 
cosine of x because it is 1 over um, ln of a times the base and then times by the derivative of the inside. Now the derivative of cosine is negative sine of x. So you can leave it that way. Okay. And if you want to stick with just how the formula is saying, that's fine. We'll do that. Like, for instance, log. Now, it's just saying log of 2 plus sine of x. So it doesn't tell you what the base is. Do you remember what the base is? This is a common log. So if it doesn't tell you the base, it's assumed to be 10. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to take, and this is how, you, I mean, you take the derivative as if you're taking the derivative of ln. Right? So I'm going to say 1 over the quantity. So 2 plus sine of x. The only thing is, though, is you want to just tack on that ln of the base and then multiply by the derivative of the inside, which would just be cosine of x. So notice how it's the same exact as taking the derivative of ln, but we just got to tack on this ln of base a with it. So everything else is the same. It's still 1 over the base, to, uh, 1 over the quantity times the derivative of the quantity, and then we just tack on that ln of base a. Let's try one more. Um, okay, so this looks like a quotient rule. This is a pretty good problem. So this is going to be low and then d high. The derivative of cotangent is negative cosecant, uh, but it looks like we have a chain in there, so we're going to multiply by the derivative of the inside. That's low d high minus high, which is cotangent 3x. Height d low, which is 1 over x, all over low low, or ln of x squared. Um, and again, don't, don't worry about simplifying it. You can just leave it that way. All right. Cool. <clears throat> all right. One other thing I want to talk about with... Uh, with logs, and then we'll jump into exponents. I'm not sure how much exponents I'm going to get to under 30 minutes, but that's okay. Um, with logarithmic differentiation, okay, logarithmic differentiation, <clears throat> there is a, a benefit to introducing logs in problems that don't normally have logs. Okay, let me explain. So this problem right here, we got y equals x to the 3 fourths times the square root of x squared plus 1 over 3x plus 2 to the fifth. That is a lot of stuff. Okay. Now, if I told you to take the derivative of this, you could do it. It's no problem. But it's quotient rule with product rule with chain rule. It's, it's a lot of rules combined into one. But you're more than capable of doing it. Logarithmic differentiation takes a, I want to say, I'll call this a complex fraction. I know it's not like the ones we're used to seeing, but by that I mean it's a fraction that, or a rational that has a bunch of different properties going on that logs can help simplify. And there's also another situation this is helpful. Whenever you have a function raised to the power of another function, then that's the second example. Okay. Here's the steps. Number one, you're going to take the logs of both sides and use your log properties to simplify it. We're going to differentiate implicitly, which we know how to do, and then we're going to solve for dy over dx. So these last two steps are the steps for implicit differentiation. So let me explain. Step one, take the, take the, <clears throat> take the ln of both sides. So I'm going to do the ln of the left side and the ln of the right side, and I'm going to take the ln of the entire quantity. <clears throat> So, I didn't change the value of the problem because what I did to one side, I did to the other. And, um, and, and still in step one, we're going to have to use log properties to simplify this. So, I got the ln of y equals. Now, let's use all of our log properties. And, and I'm going to do this maybe one or two steps. But uh, the first step is, like, I'm going to take care of this division here by separating this as the ln of x to the 3 fourths square root of x squared plus 1 and then minus the ln of 3x plus 2 to the fifth. And we can, keep, we can keep simplifying this further. We can say the ln of y equals, so this is a product rule. 
So you see how we got the product of these two quantities? We can separate that with a plus symbol. And remember, another property is the power rule. So I'm going to separate the uh, with a plus, and I'm also going to bring the powers down for each of the quantities. So for the first one, it's going to be 3 fourths ln of x and then plus. And this is the same thing as 1 half power. So the 1 half is going to come down, and I'm left with the ln of x squared plus 1. And then minus, the 5 can come down as 5 ln of 3x plus 2. And I don't believe I can separate that any further because you know you're done when the quantities inside of ln don't have any more products or quotients in them. So I think we're good to go there. And now step two says to differentiate implicit, implicitly. So the, uh, the derivative of ln of 1 uh, over y is going to be just 1 over y dy over dx because this is implicit. And on the right side, uh, let's take the derivative of each of these pieces. So this is going to be 3 fourths, 1 over x, plus 1 half. And the derivative of ln of this is going to be 1 over x squared plus 1. Okay, And then times the derivative of the inside, which is going to be 2x minus. Um, and this is going to be 5 times 1 over three, and this is five over one, times one over three x plus two, and then times by the derivative of the inside is just going to be three. So just to make that look a little bit nicer on the right side, we got three over four x um, plus this quantity in the middle, it looks like the two and the two cancel out, so it looks like I'm left with just an x on top and x squared plus one on bottom. And then over on this last one, it looks like we have 15 on top and 3x plus 2 on bottom. And then the third step says, once I get it simplified and take the derivative, just get dy over dx by itself. And the nice thing is, is all we're going to have to do to do that is just multiply both sides by y. And then we're good. So this is dy over dx equals y times this entire quantity, 3 over 4x plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 15, 3x plus 2. Now, the only other thing is, and we got dy over dx, we got the derivative, but the only other thing is, is that it has y still in the problem. And kind of a rule of thumb here is if you start the problem out explicitly, you should probably end the problem explicitly. So all we have to do is just substitute back in what y is equal to. So in this case, that's going to be um, uh, y is x to the 3 fourths square root of x squared plus 1 over 3x plus 2 to the fifth, and then times that rest of that quantity. So 3 over 4x plus x over x squared plus 1 minus 15 over 3x plus 2. And that is it. All right. <clears throat> so maybe um, we'll do one more example with, with this that's applicable and then see how much I can get done with exponentials and then we'll call it for today. Okay. All right, so we get d over dx. So the derivative of x to the square root of x. This is what we. This is whenever we have a function raised to the power of a function. So notice it's not being raised to a number, so we can't do power rule, but we can do implicit differentiation. Okay. So we're going to start off by saying y equals x to the square root of x power. That's now step one is to take the ln of both sides. Now, remember one of the properties for ln, lns. We had the quotient of the product, which we saw in the previous problem. But remember the power rule also. Power rule says that this can come down. So I got the square root of x times the ln of x. Computer's lagging again. 
equals the ln of y. Now I think everything's pretty simplified, so we can go ahead and take the derivative. So that's going to be 1 over y equals, and it looks like we have the product rule here. We have the square root of x times the ln of x. So I'm going to do the derivative of the first, which is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, keep the second the same, plus keep the first the same, and the derivative of ln of x is 1 over And I apologize. Over here, when I did the derivative of, of uh, ln of y, I should have had dy over dx because this is implicit. Okay. Now, just to make it look a little bit nicer, well, I'm going to go ahead and multiply everything by y. I'm going to go ahead and get dy over dx by itself. So I'm going to have uh, dy over dx equals, and then we're just multiplying by y to get rid of those. So we have y times... And I'm going to simplify inside just a little bit, make it look nice. Um, and maybe on this first quantity, we could say uh, ln of x over 2x to the 1 half. Makes it look a little bit nicer, but whatever. And then actually, this reduces down to um, 1 over x to the 1 half on bottom. Now, if we really want to, we, <clears throat> we could combine these two fractions together by getting a common denominator, but I think this is fine. Let's just plug back in what uh, y was, and we'll call it a day. Well, we'll call it a day with logs. So uh, <clears throat> what y was was x to the square root of x, and I'm left with ln of x over 2x to the 1 half plus 1 over x to the 1 half. All right. So that was everything with logs, and I'm left with about three minutes um, as I'm starting to go into exponentials now. I'll stop at 30 minutes, I promise, but I'm just going to go and keep going until I reach that 30 minute mark. So just to review real quickly, um, an exponential function is in the form a to the x. Okay. So we let a be greater than zero and let a not equal one. Um, and n be a positive integer, then a to any power n, you know is just a times a times a to, to whatever, however many, I mean, a to the fifth is a times a times a times a times a, right? So we know that. We also know that um, if uh, that a to the x is always greater than zero, we're not going to have a negative number. If a to the, uh, if a is between zero and one, then a to the x is like a dk function. This kind of goes back to math three, I think. And if a is greater than one, we would call this a growth function. So like if you think of the graph, here is what a, um, a decay function looks like. And here is what a growth function looks like. But notice that either way that, the, um, that they never equal less than zero. It's always either zero to infinity, right? Um, just some laws to remember, and you can read over these four laws here, but, but, but we've done these before in the past, and, and they help us later on down the road, so you can review those four properties, okay? Um, just some limits, and I've already talked about this. Remember, uh, if A is greater than 1, we have a growth function, so just kind of keeping that in mind, um, it looks like this. So, I mean, if we go to infinity, the function goes to infinity. And so we go to negative infinity, we're approaching a horizontal asymptote to zero. And for a decay function, whenever a to the x is uh, between zero and one, as we go to infinity, we're approaching zero, the horizontal asymptote. And as we go to negative infinity, we're approaching infinity. Okay, so again, just some features to keep in mind. Um, now, with um, exponentials, the most common exponential is the number e, okay? And that leads us to our first derivative that I'm going to let you look over. And this is probably my favorite derivative and probably the coolest one, and we're going to look at this later on, maybe graphically. But the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. Now, that's crazy. We're going to talk about why that is graphically tomorrow. We'll probably lead off with that. But I got 10 seconds left, and I, I promise I never go over 30 minutes. So we're gonna we're gonna do our lesson tomorrow with mostly exponentials.
So please take good notes and we'll see you tomorrow.